Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Have Gun, Will Travel. Original air date is June 5th, 1960, and the title is Apache Concerto. Let's get into it. not on a Sunday picnic. There are killers loose in this area, and we have to take every precaution. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco. 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. I hate to do this to you, hey, boy, but... Oh, oh, can I, my... Oh, oh, you saw... Uh, you uh, want a room? I have a room, thank you. Yes, sir. You, oh, Mr. Paladin. Uh, hey, boy, just close eyes at midnight for catnap. At midnight? Some catnap. It's now five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock? What are you doing on the desk? Oh, a uh, nightclub gets sick. Uh, hey, boy, take over. Hey, Mr. Paladin, why why you have a suitcase? You leave the town? Yes, I'm taking the early stage, hey, boy. Oh, you get nice now. Well, a Mr. Alonso of the New World Music Company has asked me to find two friends of his who are missing in Arizona. Yeah, plenty of room in Arizona territory to get lost. I know, hey boy, but these people should be easy to find. Professor Oscar Isles and his niece, they sell harmonium. Huh? I don't imagine they've passed unnoticed. A moment, on Well, what's that? There's a parlor organ, hey boy. It plays music. You've seen them. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, by the way, I have two tickets to the opera tomorrow night, but I won't be able to make it. Here. Why don't you take Miss Wong? Oh, thank you, Mr. Paladin. Uh, hey, boy, always want to see opera. Now, uh, what is opera like? Well, it's a... Well, it's somewhat like a play with music. Oh, the uh, many dancing girls. <laughs> no, 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 I'm afraid not. Not in this one, anyway. Oh. But I understand the soprano carries enough weight to make up for several dancing girls. Oh, then, hey, boy, watch soprano. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to, hey, boy. You can't miss her. <laughs> Crisis in Paris, debate in the United Nations, trouble in Turkey or Tokyo, north, south, east or west, CBS News covers the news because CBS News maintains large staffs of crack correspondents to give eyewitness immediacy to their reports. No station that lacks affiliation with a network of the dimension and scope of CBS radio can possibly give you this eyewitness clarity. If you want to know what's going on now, if you prefer your news new, not warmed over, you're already making a habit of CBS News on CBS Radio. You are exercising selective judgment. With hundreds of correspondents at or within fast flight of all major world developments, CBS News pledges continued coverage of what happens, wherever it happens. The first word in speed, the last word in accuracy. Yours on this station, daytime or night. Your key to all the world's happenings reported by the famous names of CBS News. Your ticket of admission to full understanding of history and the happening is this station's affiliation with CBS Radio. The hardest part of my journey to Arizona was the seat of the stagecoach. At the end of the line, the saddle of the horse I rented felt soft in comparison. Professor Oscar Isles and his niece Elsa were well remembered at places where they had given concerts displaying the New World Harmonium. Their trail led into rugged country, and late one afternoon I looked down into a valley and saw a wagon careening along a rough road. Unmistakably, it was the professor and his niece, and they were having considerable trouble. A group of riders were following the wagon, and the old man was firing a rifle at them. The young woman beside him fought to control the spooked horses. They had to be stopped before the wagon overturned. 
I rode down to help you. Help! Hang on to the reins. Pull it, pull now. Look at that, pull it out. Stop firing that rifle. Those are outlaws back there. Well, whoever they are, they've pulled up. They're just waiting. Those are desperate-looking men. They've been chasing us. Uncle is only trying to protect us. If they had planned to harm you, ma'am, the way your uncle was firing that gun wouldn't have stopped them. Now, let's just wait and see what they have on their minds. Uncle, one of them is riding toward us. Now, don't worry, my dear. I have him in my sight. Which is about the safest place for him to be. Now, just put the gun down. Howdy. Can I talk with you? I'm a U.S. Marshal. Right on up, Marshal. He looks like a criminal to me. Uh, looks don't always make the law, man. My name is Paladin, Marshal. Well, I'm John Bone. I didn't mean to stampede these folks, Paladin. I only wanted to tell them something. We saw you. You were chasing us. No, ma'am. Just waiting for the gent here to run out of ammunition or the horses to run out of steam. Me and my men were... Those out... are your men? Those, those savages? Indian scouts. They're about the finest trackers you can get. Let the Marshal talk. Thank you, Paladin. We've been trying to ride down a renegade named Chivaro. Heard that him and his half-breeds have come up from the border to do some raiding. Oh, no. Afraid so, ma'am. They're all known killers, too. We were going to warn you to make for a town or fort. Is this Chivaro supposed to be close by? I'm not sure. We're heading for the last place they were seen. Maybe we can trail them from there, but getting kind of late in the day, I guess we'll have to make camp. You mind if we camp with you? Then I'll escort these folk to the nearest settlement tomorrow. Glad to have you, Paladin. I'll tell my man. Uh, Professor Isles, we can make camp here if you don't mind. Uh, did you call me Professor Isles? I did. And you are Miss Elsa, his niece, right? Yes, but... Well, how did you know? Mr. Alonso in San Francisco was worried about you. You're long overdue, so he sent me to find you. Not really. Where have you been? Well, uh... We kept getting lost and having to start over. Uncle Oscar, I told you we should have written. But I wanted to surprise you, Alonzo. Ah, well, we better make camp. Those savages, are they really going to be with us? They are, for the night. And you should be mighty grateful. Well, I doubt if I'll be able to sleep with them camped with us. Well, let me tell you, Professor, I wouldn't be able to sleep without them. Now that I know Chivaro and his renegades are nearby... admit, Mr. Paladin, it's quite reassuring to have Marshal Bone and his men standing guard. Uh, I thought you'd feel that way when it got dark. It's rather frightening to think there may be killers out there beyond the firelight. Javaro and his men are mostly Apache half men, ma'am, and not likely to attack an armed camp. Then you never know. Well, it's much too gloomy around here. Uncle Oscar, what we need is some music. Why, Elsa, my dear, it's a splendid idea. You can play for these gentlemen to express our thanks. Come, I shall lower the tailgate. I'm sure Mr. Paladin is a music lover. I shall dedicate my concert to him. What are you talking about, Paladin? We are about to be favored by Miss Elsa Isles at the harmonium. <laughs> Come on, Marshal. I ain't here the harmonium since I was in church last. That's longer than I care to think about. Oh, and now, gentlemen, I take pleasure in presenting my lovely niece, Miss... Elsa Isles in concert at the compact but mighty console of this splendid new world harmonium. <laughs> Ready, Elsa, dear? All ready, Uncle. Any requests, Mr. Paladin? Oh, just something soft and gentle, Miss Isles. I shall do my best. Just for you, Mr. Paladin. Before I realized it, I was lost in the music played by the lovely girl. Her beauty and the music of the little harmonium was an unusual contrast to the rugged wilderness and the black night. I wasn't the only one absorbed by the sight and sound. Marshal Bowen seemed hypnotized, and his men moved closer, gazing intently at the girl. They were entranced by the strange music. Even the ones on guard turned their backs to the night and wandered toward the wagon. This would never do. I was about to stop her when she finished her first selection. 
<laughs> Delightful, my dear. Now, play my favorite. All right, Uncle. Uh, Professor, I'm sorry, but I think we'd better end the concert for tonight. But why, Mr. Pallet? I've only started. Marshal. Marshal. Huh? Take a look at your men. Well, I'll be... Get back to your post, men. Paladin's right, ma'am. I, I almost forgot where we were. Thank you for the music, ma'am. Well, Mr. Paladin, you're evidently not the music lover I thought you were. A music lover I am, Miss Riles. I also have a great love for life. You mean the renegades might be out there? They might be. blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for real smoking satisfaction. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. The night passed without incident. I tried to get as much rest as I could, for I knew that hurting my musician friends through killer-infested country would be no picnic. I hated to see Marshal Bone and his men ride off just before dawn, but I knew they had a job to do. So did I. Getting the professor and Elsa on the road was not easy, but somehow we were soon on our way. Really, Mr. Paladin, I don't see why we had to start at such a disgustingly early hour. Why, the sun isn't even up. Oh, now, now, Elsa. Miss Isles, if I'm to be responsible for your safety, you'll have to follow my rules of the road. Mr. Paladin's right, Elsa. We should be thankful he's here. I'm sure Mr. Alonzo paid him handsomely. He did, ma'am. He thinks you're worth protecting, even if you don't. All right, now let's travel. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> Start again as soon as I tie this water barrel back on the wagon. Whatever you say, Mr. Paladin. Uh, the horses ought to be arrested by now. Uh, that'll do it. We'll need that water. There's desert country ahead. Hey, where's your uncle? He went into that thicket over there. He saw a bird. He what? Uncle Oscar is keeping a notebook of unusual flora and fauna we see on our trip. Look, I told you both to stay close to the wagon. Professor Isles. Yes, he Professor Isles. He couldn't have gone far. Miss Isles, in this country, just behind that thicket is far. Come on, we better find him. Oh, very well. I wish I could convince you and your uncle that we're not on a Sunday outing. You know that Chivaro is in the area. We have to take every precaution. Mr. Paladin, we're not children. I wonder, Miss Isles. Professor. You sure this is the thicket? Yes, I'm certain. Uncle Oscar. I wonder what could have happened to him. Well, stay close. There's a small clearing through these bushes. Come on. Mr. Coward, look. Do not fire the gun, senor. No. My knife will slice his throat. Mr. Coward. Quiet, quiet. My men surround you. Drop your gun, senor. Bueno. Now, please, come forward. Do as he says. That's better, amigos. Now I can't let this funny old man go without hurting him. Uh, Elsa, he was going to kill me. Oh, Uncle Oscar. What will we do, Mr. Paladin? You better ask him. 
Senor Chivaro, I believe. Si, amigo, I'm Chivaro. And I will decide what is to happen to you. You better make a wise decision, Chivaro. There's a posse not too far away. <laughs> this I know. That is why we return to the border. And now, amigos, because of you, Chivaro will travel in safety, comprend? I think I do. We're your prisoners till you get back into Mexico. Hostages to keep you from being attacked. Yeah, <laughs> si. With you among us, we will not worry about a, a gringo with a badge. And after you cross the border, what then? What then, senor? <laughs> you and the old one here, my Apache brothers, can have to do what they will. And as for the senorita, we will see. Mr. Paladin, what does he mean? Miss Isles, I'm afraid this is no time to explain. Just, uh, just pray that you never find out. <laughs> The professor and I were tied to the back of the wagon, half dragged along the dusty road. Navarro rode up with Elsa, taunting her mercilessly. Just as the professor was about to collapse, we luckily had to stop for camp as it was growing dark. Guards were posted, and the professor and I were untied, forced to sit near the campfire. Much to the amusement of his men, Chivaro made support of Elsa by climbing up into the wagon and throwing out her personal effects one by one. Professor, can you hear me? Yes, Paladin. What is it? Don't look for yourself, but I just saw Marshal Bone, a couple of his men, up on the bluff against the moonlight. Oh? Can they, can they help us? Well, they can't attack with us caught in the middle. Chivaro's guards haven't seen them. They're too busy watching Chivaro. We've got to find a way to help. You come up on this wagon, senorita. You play the music box for me. Oh, I will not. You can't force me to. Uncle, Mr. Paladin. I think you will play, senorita. And Shavara mean what he says. Get go of my arm. You're hurting you. Paladin, can't we stop it? Miss Isles. Come up on that wagon. Uh, wait. Please, uh, play for me. What? Play just as you did last night. But I... Please, Miss Isles. All right, Mr. Paladin. Oh, see, si. my better senorita. Look, <laughs> Carl, you made a music for you. I put you up on your work. Are you thinking of Paladin making her play for that ruffian? Remember what happened last night when she played? We were all practically hypnotized by the music. It might happen again. Only Chivado and his renegades will be the victims. Oh, what then? I'm not sure. I only hope that Marshal Bone and his men will take it as a signal to move in. But Paladin... He started... Again, the music had its effect. Chivaro stared at Elsa as she played. His men were like children, intrigued by what they saw and heard. All of them turned toward the wagon, their guard duty, everything else forgotten. As I had hoped, Marshal Bone started to move. On the edge of the darkness around the fire, I saw one of his men move up on the renegade guard and silently pull him down behind a boulder, strangling him. Another guard quietly disappeared as the marshal's men took positions as close to the campsite as they dared. Elsa neared the end of her selection. I knew it was time to act. There was a guard near me, his rifle slack in his hands as he listened to the music. I had to get the gun to use on Chivaro before he could hurt Elsa. Hey, amigo. <coughs> Chivaro, aquí. <laughs> Miss Isles. Miss Isles, are you all right? Yes, Mr. Cowden, I think so. Well, let me help you down from the wagon. Oh. Uh, I guess you can see now why I wanted you to play. Yes, Mr. Cowden, I can. And thank you. Thank you ever so much. Howdy, Cowden. Hey, Bum. Sorry to break up another one of your concerts. Oh, that's quite all right, Marshal Bum. After those renegades, you and your men look like angels. Oh, we're not exactly angels, ma'am. Any of you folks hurt? I guess not, but Chivaro and his men are not so fortunate. Yeah, I think we got them all. And you get the credit for Chivaro, oh. Paladin. Wait a minute. Where's the professor? Oh, no. Over there, he's falling. No. Uh, let me check him, Miss Isles. He's so still. Yeah, he's breathing, though. I don't see no wounds. But he doesn't move. Uncle Oscar? No, don't be upset. I think he'll come through. But, oh, what's wrong with him? Oh, not too much, Miss Isles. It's my personal diagnosis that the good professor has just fainted. (laughs) 
Come in. Ah, Miss Wong. Hey, boy. Oh, I good morning, Mr. Faradin. Uh, Missy Wong and Hey, boy, come to welcome you yes, back. Sir. Well, that's most thoughtful of you. You find people, you go out? Yes, Miss Wong, yes. Oh, lost yes. or found and safely delivered. Oh, <laughs> oh that are very good, Mr. Yes, Faradin. Um... Uh, are you going back to uh, something interesting? Ah, <laughs> that's why you're here. You heard about my harmonium. Uh, huh? hey, boy, Mr. Wong, mm. I'm most curious about music box. Well, it's right over here. Oh. It was presented to me for uh, services oh. rendered. Oh. Oh. Yes, and I have quite an attachment for this instrument. Oh. It, it saved my life. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Paladin, uh, can you play this harmonium? Uh, no, no, hey, boy, I'm afraid not. Maybe someday I'll learn how. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, did you two use those tickets to the opera? Oh, most certainly, Mr. Paladin. Uh, Missy Wong and hey, boy, go. <laughs> but not understanding one word. Oh, word, very strange. But we can use it Oh, you lovely. Well, I guess words aren't always important. Music has charms to soothe the savage beast. To soften rocks or bend the knotted oak. Yes, sir. Yeah, Miss Paladin think Miss Wong and her boy savage? Oh, no, no. Of course not, hey, boy. No, I was just quoting from a play by Mr. William Congreve. And I never realized what he said was so true. Pepsi-Cola refreshes without filling. Why? Because it's truly light. Sorry, you're forgetting something. Wait, Kay, there's more. Yes, ice-cold Pepsi is the delicious refreshment that goes great at a picnic or a party. But, sir... And Pepsi goes fast. People like it, so keep plenty handy. There. Oh, you did fine, except for one thing. Well, I mentioned lightness and how Pepsi refreshes and how fast it goes. You left out Pepsi sociability. You know, the desociable song. But, Kay, I can't sing. I can. Listen. Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. Well, at least I can say this. Pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Please do. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Ross, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Parrott and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Rod Peterson. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kern, Barney Phillips, Lawrence Dobkin, and Eleanor Berry. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.